can you start with a, a story that will lighten the mood a little bit? <clears throat> when I was young, the thought of being inside a tank excited me so much that I would badger my father every day to take me to go see one. Every day he said no. <laughs> I was three or four uh, shortly before I departed Camp Ashraf to the United States when he decided to take me for a walk. And uh, he, would, uh, he would tell jokes to, to keep the mood warm because, uh, as I know now, those few days were our last days together. <clears throat> On September 1st, 2013, Iraqi forces and the Iranian Revolutionary Guards Quds forces staged a massacre on the residents of Camp Ashraf, killing 52 unarmed, innocent, legally protected civilians, including my father, Ali Asghar Emadi. My name is Amir Masood Emadi. I stand here speaking not just to you, but to several different audiences, each deserving, each deserving a different uh, message about the massacre in Camp Ashraf. First, I speak to my mother, my, uh, my aunts, my uncles, and cousins in Camp Liberty. Um, second, to the U.S. government. Third, to my countrymen and women in Iran. And finally, I will speak to my American friends. But well, before I begin, I'd like to express my deepest condolences to Mrs. Maryam Rajavi and the leadership of the Iranian resistance. You know, in, at times like these, the MEK, in the MEK, you don't necessarily say condolences, you, you say congratulations, because this is a victory against the Iranian regime. Uh, but I, I know how heart, heartbroken you must be. And my heart is with you. <clears throat> so to my family in Camp Liberty, in particular, my mother, uh, Fatima Nabavi, mom, uh, since we last talked a few months ago, I got my master's. <laughs> um, I got an MBA in global management, and it's ironic because at times like these, it's, it's a bit difficult to manage myself. Um, but I've dropped everything in my life, and I've dedicated every minute of my time to uphold my father's dignity and ideals. My father didn't die in vain. It was a betrayed promise that got him murdered. And my responsibility is to ensure your protection and those around you. And I will do my utmost. We are humbled by your perseverance and commitment. That is why the mullahs are so afraid of you. And we are proud of your leadership for regime change in Iran. And we bow our heads to your sacrifice. To the United States government, my father trusted you. He disarmed for you. You made him vulnerable. When he sent me away to America, only days before the Persian Gulf War, the first one in 1991, he did so to keep me safe and secure. And when he left me on September 1st, his good reason was his valor and his conviction to the cause of freedom, which coincides with your values. But when you left him, you didn't leave him with safety or security. You didn't leave him because it was honorable. You knew Maliki was under the thumb of the Iranian regime where he fled to seek refuge. And you knew Maliki would unleash his wolves on my father and his friends.
to the Iranian people, including my relatives, protesting in the streets, and uh, in prison for being part of the same movement that my father died for, the MEK. We're fighting for our future, and I have no doubt that together we could bring that positive change that we seek. And finally, to my American friends, in particular to those on this, this panel, with every beat of my heart, I am sincerely grateful for all your support. And I admire stalwart public servants such as Secretary Rich, Director, we'll see, <laughs> looking for you. Yeah. Um, Director Woolsey, Ambassador Dries, Joseph, Mr. Sano, Professor Hughes, and American Warriors. Colonel Martin. Colonel Kentwell. And many others. <clears throat> what happened in Ashraf? That was foreseeable. That was foreseeable. What happened in Ashraf was foreseeable. In fact, we warned about it. <clears throat> what happened then can happen again. But with your support, we can prevent it. To conclude, as I stand here honored by your support and the support of our esteemed speakers, I repeat that the United States is legally and morally responsible for the safety and the security of the residents of Camp Liberty. They can foresee attacks and they can never justify Maliki's actions, especially after the, the recent lies of detaining the seven hostages. We don't want to see any more deaths. The deaths of over 100 Ashrafis since the killing started in 2009 was enough. My dad's death was enough. Now I just pray that I would one day live up to his ideals morals and conviction. I pray he's looking down, saying that's my boy. I wish that one day I can be so courageous that if necessary, giving my life so that millions of other people are going to live in freedom would be a sudden byproduct of the life I choose to lead. I have one more message. This one is to Obama. One question for you. When will America's written commitments mean something? If you want to stop Maliki's killing against the unarmed residents of Camp Liberty, you know what to do. Keep your damn promise. Keep your promise.